And um, we have a few more people coming on. So I'll just um, say that was an interview with Caroline Corey, who just produced an incredible movie called Superhuman. Did you give a little wrap up of the movie, Caroline? So. Yeah, again, uh, the movie is about uh, the power of consciousness over the physical world, over the physical body. What makes this film different is that it's not just information and talk and theory. It's actual demonstration, scientific um, uh, experiments done in real time on camera under laboratory conditions that validate that when I focus on water, I want the pH to change. It does. How does it do this? Uh, that when I focus on a piece of paper, I want it to move this way or that way. It does. Uh, I can have blindfolds on, be completely blindfolded and still be able to see and do all kinds of stuff. So I feel this movie is at a whole new level of not just talking about this concept, but demonstrating uh, that our consciousness is um, not limited by the body. It's tapping into uh, the intelligence of the universe. And so if I can do that on a piece of paper, then I can use that principle to tap into an intelligent being that's floating in my space, an extraterrestrial, a UFO, whatever it is. So it's incredibly powerful. It's incredibly timely. And I really, really would love everybody to watch it because it's supporting your work. It's supporting what you've been doing. And that's superhumanfilm.com. That's right. And that's a great intro to what I hope we can really talk about today here on This is the Experiences panel at the Portal to Ascension Summit Conference. And we have some amazing women here talk about their experiences and their interaction with experiences. But taking off from what Caroline just said, because she's an experiencer too, I would like this panel not to just talk about, oh, I've had this experience and that experience, but how does the experience at this time in our history start to integrate into the social fabric, into society? It's like, yes, of course, it's shocking if it's new to you and, and there are people just kind of starting that process. But if you've been around the phenomena, if you've had interactions and I think everyone here has, has had an integration of their experiences, um, you know, contact, then something else I think is happening at this juncture in history. There's a, not just an acceptance, but a, an influence that's starting to exert itself in a more mainstream population. I think I think that's how I see it. I think that's why movies like Superhuman are getting out there because they're told from a bigger perspective. So let me just introduce the panel. And I've been talking to Carolyn Corey, uh, producer, writer, and experiencer. Um, and she's also, you can also see her on Ancient Aliens and lots of places that she speaks at, Contact in the Desert. Thanks for being here, Carolyn. Thanks for having I me. Oh, let me just introduce myself, actually. I'm Alan Steinfeld. <laughs> it's always good to know who's talking to what. Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. And I have to say, I'm obsessed with this topic for whatever reason. I've had contact. I've had, should we call them abductions? Whatever. I had something that said to me, there's something else going on here. And... And I, I, want, I need to know what that is. I need to find out. I need to interact and understand it and, and even accept it and see what that can bring to the rest of the planet. So it's sort of been, I guess, 25 years search for integration and making sense. And it's great to meet people who are here who also accept this as a as a fact of life and a fact of existence and, and not just saying, oh, wow, but learned how to bring this into their everyday awareness. So I'm ha very happy Barbara Lamb is here. 
She's a hypnotherapist and she's been working with contactees, experiencers, abductees, whatever you want to call them, for many, many years, taking them back, regressing them to that point of contact and finding out what that's really about. So we'd be talking to Barbara. I know you have to leave a little early, right, Barbara? Right. It's okay. Okay. And we have my friend, Rebecca Hardcastle Wright, who's just written a book on exoconsciousness. And she actually coined that term, exoconsciousness, is, which I feel is what we need to do is expand beyond the human drama. We need to go out there and realize there's, there's other stories to tell about our human existence and just the same stuff we hear and see in movies and, and, and the everyday chatter or watching the football game or going shopping and all those mundane, there's a bigger story and we're all a part of it. So thank you, Rebecca. And then you have Sherry Wild. I've seen you, Sherry, at Contact in the Desert and you have a fantastic story of transformation as from what I know of you going from someone who's been traumatized by contact to embracing it and bringing it to another level of awareness. Is that, is that fair to say about your story, Sherry? What would you like? Oh, you unmute yourself for a second. Yes, there we go. I would say that's, that's my message is um, the whole, you, you question whether you should call it an abduction. I agree with that. It's, I don't like to call it an abduction. We have an encounter, and as long as we're in fear when we have that encounter, we will view it as something nefarious. And it's a matter of changing our own, being neutral about it, changing our own um, perspective on it before we can really get to the bottom of what's happening to us. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my message. Try to take the fear out of it. Can you, I'll get to Geraldine in a second, but can you talk about a little bit how you change your perspective from going from fear to acceptance? Well, I, I guess as I was, I went crazy after I found out that, that what uh, my lost time meant to me um, through, through hypnosis, the lost time meant that I had been abducted by these little gray creatures. I just, at the time I was 36 or 37 years old when I um, was investigated and, and that was discovered and I was not prepared for that. I was very pragmatic, level-headed businesswoman and I couldn't accept it and so I fought against it and I tried to find any kind of a clue that I could that would cause the whole thing to come unraveled and I, I couldn't find anything. There was no, all the proof went the other direction. There were witnesses and everything that was coming out was sustaining that it was, that this was the, the reality and I couldn't wrap my mind around it. And then it started to happen to me in real time as I was trying to unravel it and figure it out, they were starting to come, they were coming for me and had been, but I wasn't aware of it signs so I had to figure out what was going on because it was, the fear of it was going to kill me it was just going to it already it had destroyed my marriage and my career was was suffering from it so I had to get to the bottom of it and all of a sudden I, I, I had some people reach out to me and um, offer to um, to be my support system and one of the guys in that group he was the one responsible for changing my perspective on it. He said, you know, what would it look like, Sherry, if, if it turned out that you weren't a victim? What would it look like if you weren't the victim in this? If you actually, before birth maybe, or at some level had agreed to this? And I thought that was crazy. But I thought about it. I, I, I don't want to just dismiss anything without giving it a fair chance. And so I started to think on it, and I, and I started to, to um, explore that. And I realized that it was true in my daily life that actually whatever you looked at, whatever you encountered, whatever you dealt with in your daily life, if you dealt with it from a place of fear, that that tainted the experience and that we could change the way the experience was just by changing our perspective on it. And I started getting into the Course in Miracles and things like that. And so it was a huge awakening for me. It was just huge, you know, it, it changed everything. The My whole belief system was knocked out from under me and I had to, kind of rebuild from the ground up what, what I really believed in and what was really true in this world. Wow, thank you for that. That, that sort of leads us into Geraldine. Welcome back for the third time today, Geraldine. Geraldine Orozco is someone who has a similar experience, I think, if um, you hear her story, where she was just 
Well, you tell it. I don't want to tell your story, Geraldine. But then how did you come to a place of acceptance? That's the key that I would love for you to share. Thank you. I definitely resonate with that journey of at first coming into a shock of what you experienced and trying to place somewhere in your regular everyday life something like this that is connecting you to an interdimensional you know space um, and I think that it took me it took me a couple years to be able to integrate the experience to even be allow or allow myself to be able to speak about it um, you know outside my very intimate circle of my small family um, and you know but the, by the time I came out um, publicly to speak about it I think at that point I had already integrated and I went through a process of deep healing and awakening to create a very strong spiritual foundation that helped support that transition from everyday life into learning about the interdimensional reality, our multidimensional aspects of ourselves. So it was uh, a process throughout five years, and it was actually through hypnosis, through support groups, and it was through, you know, going into uh, a connection and, and a kind of revisiting of our reality and the way that we look at the structure of our reality that helped me understand that we are more than just physical. And it's when we enter those aspects, when you dive deep into the spiritual aspect, at the very end, you're going to be met with the interdimensional question and consciousness. You're questioning consciousness. Consciousness. And it's the same when you go down the path of extraterrestrial research, you're going to be met with consciousness. And that's kind of where everything links is, you know, how we are meeting these two different paradigms of, of, of reality, of existence, how life manifests in itself. That's, that's great. great. That, that brings up um, some really key, um, <coughs> a bit of an echo here. I don't know where that's going. Um, that brings us some key points in this discussion is that it is all about a deeper level of awareness and this is what we are becoming as exoconscious beings. So Barbara, do you want to talk about working with people and also finding that level of acceptance? Because I realize that um, people listening are not all at this level of acceptance, but I think this panel, because we're all pretty grounded and have worked through something can help make a difference in people listening. So how do you work with people and help them find this acceptance and bring it to this next level? Because that's really where I want the panel to go to this next level. Um, Absolutely. That's what I want too. And uh, for years I've been uh, giving talks at different conferences and emphasizing the positive aspects of extraterrestrial encounters. Uh, we know that there are many, many different types of beings out there, and many of them do come and visit human beings on Earth. And some of those beings, admittedly, uh, seem to be more self-serving. Uh, they may be sort of scientifically trying to figure out our biology and our society and how we work and uh, they tend to do poking and probing and a lot of physical examinations. And of course, people who experience that are not happy at all with that. In fact, usually they strenuously object. Uh, but that's just a tiny part of what goes on with the huge number of beings whom I have found out do actually have encounters with human beings. So um, I've been doing this work since 1991. And by that, I mean that I have been doing hypnotic regressions as a licensed psychotherapist. I've been doing these uh, hypnotic regressions with people uh, to find out the details of these odd little bits of experiences that they typically remember, like being visited by unusual beings in the middle of the night or, or maybe driving along and um, and then suddenly there's a beam of light coming into the car and the car motor stops and the person pulls the car off the road hopefully and then beings show up and the encounters begin. Um, anyway, I have certainly found out that the encounters can happen anywhere and any time mm -hmm even when the person being visited 
is in a big crowd of people. And as many of you on the panel know, but maybe not everybody else knows, uh, these beings have remarkable abilities. They can switch us off. That means that even the person who's going to be taken for the experience gets switched off very soon after the first very few moments. That is put in a state of not being consciously aware. They're not harmed, they're not knocked out or anything, but they just are not conscious of what is occurring. And so that's true of anybody who happens to be accompanying the person who is being taken for one of these encounters, that these other people are switched off out of awareness too. And again, but, not uh, harmed, but just simply. But how do we? How do we get conscious? How do we stay conscious? I mean, how do we take response if we're switched off? How can we possibly integrate that into the bigger picture? Is my, you know. Well, very important question. So most of the people who have come to me have had a number of experiences where they're aware of just the first very few moments of visitors extraterrestrials being there, and then they are out of consciousness uh, for typically an hour or two, and then returned. And then they may be aware of being back in their car if they were taken from there or back in the bed. So because we don't remember in most cases, uh, that's where hypnotic regression is tremendously helpful. Right. Because in a regression, we can go back to the event that the person is wondering about to those first few moments and have the sense of living through those first few moments right through the whole experience until they are returned again. And in that process of hypnotic regression, I, I just admire it and I'm so thankful for it because it certainly seems like we get all the details moment by moment by moment as if the person is totally reliving that experience. I think the way we can understand is that the subconscious part of our minds, the truth for all of us, the subconscious part of the mind records absolutely everything that we experience. It even records those things that we are not consciously aware of. And so when we go back into a nice, really deeply relaxed state that I help people to get into, state of hypnosis, in other words, um, that we can access the material in the subconscious part of the mind, we can go back to that incident and then live it through every moment as if it were happening right now. Well, that's uh, where so I want to get, that, that is where I want to get to as far as, okay, accepting it, moving on and integrating. Did you have something else to say? No, I cut you off for a second. What were you going to say? No, that's all right. I've forgotten now. <laughs> no, no, no. But I want to talk to Carolyn, uh, Corey, and, and, you know, this is sort of like everyone can jump in also. But Carolyn, that you've made all your experiences conscious, haven't you? And um, I want to get to the place of integration because I think as a planetary civilization, yes, it's shocking and awful and traumatic, but let's see where it's all going. And so how do you talk about the integration, Carolyn, based on your experiences? I think for me, this is, this is really my main focus. It's like, uh, we already know that this is real. I know, many people know. And so the focus of my work is not necessarily to rehash or keep uh, trying to convince myself or others that this is real and this is happening, but rather to say, now what? What can I do with these experiences and how can I apply it 
to enhance my physical experience. So, so that's why everything that I've developed, my you know, 15 years of work in, a, in the field of consciousness studies, energy medicine has to do with specific tools and, uh, and things to just enhance those abilities. You know, and what so, ability? Which ability? Yeah. So, so the fir for, so the first step is to acknowledge that all your experiences are real. You know, to kind of let go of did this happen? Did this not happen? You know, and am I crazy and all that good stuff? Mm -hmm. So, let go of that. That's step one, and then start to question and focus on wait what did I do to tap to download this Pleiadian message? Like what, how did that happen? Uh, when I was asleep, how did I come in contact with this intelligent being? So when you start asking these questions, you're now focusing on the mechanics of your consciousness and how you are interacting with other beings consciousness and also the container, the parameters within which this communication and this contact is happening, meaning the mechanics of the universe. So now you are no longer still questioning and, you know, focusing focusing on just the experience, you are now at the level of integrating, you're at the level of putting in practice what the experience has brought to you and figuring out, wait, if I did this to communicate with this extraterrestrial, for example, for example, uh, when, you, when you do this type of work, you sharpen your consciousness and your mind to such a point that you get a, a certain amount of discernment because your brain is not functioning in the same way. Your brain is not functioning in a linear manner. Like, you know, right now I'm, you're asking me a question, I'm, I'm, you know, responding to you in the English language. And so my brain is firing, you know, from the frontal lobe to the temporal lobe to the language center. It's all over the place. But when I come in contact with an extraterrestrial that I've never seen before in my life, I'm sleeping at night and here comes this entity. I have no idea. It's, you know, it's not like I spend my time researching you know, all the types of beings. I'm talking about the first time this happens. Your brain is kind of merged. You know, the way that communication happens is completely different. You're operating at a whole different level. And in that split second, you, I mean, I, everybody can as well, but I could see, hear, sense, understand, uh, know everything about this being in this split second. He doesn't have to introduce myself, himself like, hello, I'm from this, I'm from this planet, you know, the way we do it down here. It's, it's this merging of consciousness that allows this instantaneous communication and understanding of everything, of consciousness. Right. And so, just no. imagine if mm -hmm. you figure out how you how did that, how you did that. It means that you, you can then apply it to other things. You can apply it to quickly uh, merging with the outcome of something you want to do, quickly merging with, you know, a location you want to go to, if that makes sense. You begin to operate at a whole different level if you understand what your brain did, what you, what your uh, consciousness did. To we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to the merging part because that's like the next level. But let me just talk to Rebecca too, because Rebecca, this is your work. This is your field. But you different functioning or different ways of functioning human brain. Talk about what you're creating with the Exo Consciousness Institute and your Exo Consciousness Journal. We we have an international community. Um, it's called IXO the Institute for Exoconsciousness, Consciousness. And we are a uh, community, a worldwide community of ongoing conscious experiencers. So we have, uh, we're not first time experiencers, but any first time experiencer is certainly welcome to join us. And our work is basically to come together to, um, as Caroline said, to use and apply our, our context. So exoconsciousness is the innate, so all of us have it, it's the innate human ability to contact, communicate, and most importantly, co-create with ETs and multidimensionals. So we take our contact and from the contact, as Caroline and Barbara have talked about, and Cheryl, Sherry and Geraldine, we, we take that contact and from that contact, we say, 
how do I use this in my everyday life? And right. so the two missions of our institute is number one, that we're going to seed ex exoconscious entrepreneurs. So if you're a healer or you're a writer, an artist, a scientist, um, a mathematician, uh, someone that invents technology, that we are there for you to bring forth this innovation that you're bringing into the world as co-creating it with yourself as a contactee with extraterrestrials. So it's a co-created joint enterprise, but it's not emerging. I want to make that clear. It's not merging. So it's that humans as exoconscious humans retain their sovereign moral autonomy. They retain their humanness and certainly develop an exoconscious self, as we say, as this process unfolds with extraterrestrials. But this is really about our humanness and um, bringing something new to the planet. Our second mission is to offer training so that if you become, let's say you bring a new technology to the planet, then at, as a member of our community, you will also train other people in your technology. Maybe you brought forth a new healing modality. So you train others in that modality. So th those are the two ways we go. Integration is huge for us. If you, uh, um, as Sherry and Geraldine talked about, and I can't wait to, to listen to uh, Celestine, mm -hmm. hi. Um, th that integration piece is so important because once the integration takes place, then you can be at peace with who you are. And as Barbara talked about what, what your mission here on earth is about, mm -hmm. and then you can join our community or any community that's bringing forth this, we actually call it that we're building an exoconscious civilization. So we're putting the work in of the nuts and bolts to bring mm -hmm. something different to earth as a co-creative ET multidimensional um, innovation. Yes, we, are, we exactly are building an exoconscious civilization and all the people here, all the, all the women here are part of that, foundation evolution because I talk to pretty much everyone and they are I mean I have to say though part of merging and we could talk about this later once you have an experience you're already sort of in this other level so Celestine Star welcome to the panel and I know Celestine I've just talked to her a couple of times last week about the levels of conscious contact she has had and how she's integrated. So this is sort of what we've been discussing, this integration of the exoconsciousness or the star beings with life on earth here. So how, how do you understand it and what have you done in your life to make that possible? So uh, what I'm getting, what I'm hearing is that having had the experience, how did I integrate it? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, how did I I and also I want to take people to a global integration with this panel. How do we, as you know, sort of pioneers, integrate the planet to accept this and work with this as a reality? So that's sort of my question. Mm, okay. So... My experience has been from the time of birth, and I, I let people tune into their own experience and just see how they've been gently moved forward in their awareness. And I, I have to say, like the 60s was a big awakening for everyone through the songs and the music and uh, even the medicines. They kind of just broke open the mind frame that was kind of, as they say, the square mind frame uh, where, where it was from the old schools of Europe and the peasantry and the royalties and just breaking the barriers of going from individuality to uh, community and going from uh, you know, uh, Americans and Europeans to global. And we had the first you know, uh, Gregorian in space, 
uh, which gave us, you know, the um, ecological uh, communities that began to feel for the earth and be with the earth. So we are the next phase. And those of us who have had that, um, we were, we are the sensitives. We were born this way. And we were born specifically to be able to re recognize that there are other intelligences that are working uh, in the forces of nature and in planetary systems and coming in and talking to us, whether it's, oh my goodness, there's a light orb, what is that? You know, and being able to stop and just say, what is that? I had light orbs in my yard. I called the neighbor, he comes in, he's like, what is that? I don't know, we're just standing there for 15 minutes. And we started saying, we love you. And they're whirling around and changing colors and, you know, just having these interactions, uh, they, they build, there's a building. And so we've gotten to a place where uh, many of us who are here, I just love each and every one of you have had enough experience that you could speak from the heart and know that it is true. As you said, Alan, we have, we are embodying that experience. Right. And so I love what you're doing, Rebecca, and taking it to the next level. It's like, so the work that I do is um, individuals. I work with individuals and it, it was years and years of just, you know, polishing the mirror, you know, just getting all the traumas out, the traumas and the dramas. And so uh, all of a sudden people started taking the leap to like into their divinity, you know, and uh, my experience with the galactics, which has been, you know, my, you know, since, since I had my near-death experience and in New Mexico when I was seven, uh, a direct experience inside a starship being uh, with my whole family where we were being uh, modulated and checked. Um, since those times, uh, I started seeing with people that they need to go back to the first time, I was given this by the Galactics, go back to the very first time they came to Earth. So they gave me the ability to take people through trance work. I've done hundreds of people now. And they go back to the very first time they came. And what's really amazing is they begin to come in touch with who they are. They awaken to like, oh, my hands, I have three fingers, I have four fingers. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm tall, I'm a light being, I'm here, you know, I'm here reconnaissance, I'm doing uh, here for resources. Uh, oh, I'm in a group. Uh, oh, we came through a stargate. No, we can't. And so having distinct understandings and um, such detail, and then we go back to where they came from. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole different level. And once they go there, they awaken to their, almost their divinity. And that then is consciousness you're teaching people. I mean, I would say, yeah. right? Yeah. So they come back in. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's just a very natural, it's like uh, the Aurora Borealis, you know, the snake biting the tail. Um, but it's an alchemical process that was given to me as an uh, encoded transmission. Right. No. So, okay. Go ahead. Do I'm you want to? I want to finish with we do yes, Sky please. Walk. We do Skywatch so that I do open ones and I do advanced ones. The open ones is for people who just want to come. We do it in a sacred ceremony. So always a ceremony is going on. We're doing the rounds. Everybody does the prayer to the mother because mm -hmm. the galactics I work with are, there's no differentiation between nature and themselves. So the radiant ones. So we, we let them know that they are, you know, a part of what's happening. And by the time the galactics come out and start showing themselves, it's a natural awakening. Mm. So then they come home and it's like, okay, what do you, here's your homework, you know, like, uh, so here's the homework. So they have the experience and then they're journaling and writing. And then when they come the next time, they're going to bring something with them. They're going to bring a writing, a teaching or something. So we're always developing them in group. Yeah, and we're individuals, so that's what I would well, say. We'll get back to that. I, I just want to ask Sherry, uh, based on what everyone says, is a, it seems like there's a new way or a different way we have to use our mind as we go beyond the fear and kind of the lower levels of humanity, if you want to call it. It's a sort of what Caroline's teaching in her movie, but would you would you say that's true of you, that we have to cognize reality in a new way, Sherry, and, and what's been your project? Absolutely. And I, I'm, I'm so uplifted to hear how fast we're moving forward and moving out of the old paradigm of fear. 
when I was first introduced and awakened to my experiences, it was right around, right before um, 1990, right around into there. And everything was about the encounter experience was based in fear. And you couldn't find anyone who was talking positive, having anything positive to say about it. And when I tried to say something along those lines that maybe this isn't all nefarious, maybe there's actually some positive to this. Um, I was told that I had Stockholm syndrome. And so, you know, we're, I'm so happy to see that we're moving past all that and we're treating this in a mature manner. So yes, we have to go to a new, a, a higher level to deal with it because the beings that we're interacting with are coming in from high frequencies. Usually they're, they're fifth or sixth dimensional beings, if not more. And they pull us, our frequency goes up when we encounter them, when we're with them and we join with them. On, it's, it's a multidimensional thing that's taking place with us and with them. And we need to, you know, we need to move out of kindergarten. It's more, it's way past the time for humanity to move into and step into the power that, that they are. So right. I'm that's why I, I don't want to address questions about good, or bad, or I don't know, there's some other questions in the chat are just about the old paradigms of um, why they are here. But you, Sherry, were given particular downloads, weren't you, to share with the rest of humanity. Do, do you care to share anything that came to you? Well, they, they were very forceful in the three important things to know, which I went into the book. Um, they wanted me to share that with everyone. The three important things to know being um, that monitor your thoughts, and the other one is uh, we are multidimensional beings existing on more than one level simultaneously. And the other one was we are all one with the creator. Mm -hmm. And those three tenets are the things that they say if we, if we just know those, actually if we could just get the first one, which is we are all one with our creator, they told me if, if humanity would get that and just live by that, that would solve all the problems on planet Earth. But mm -hmm. he's, you know, the thing is it becomes, like I always say, it becomes a bumper sticker. Um, people know it and they say it, but they don't live it. And that's kind of the problem with it. And I think that this, a panel like this and what, what, what's going on here with all of the conferences that are happening now, these online conferences, it, I mean, it kind of opens the door for so many more people to be able to come in and, and, and listen to these kinds of conversations and discussions. When Contact in the Desert and all the other conferences are great, but in some ways, this is a benefit to what's going on right now on the planet in that we can all join together via the Zoom connection and, and share this information. So right. it's raising consciousness. No, I think this is great that we can share in this sort of forum with so many more people. And it is about a shift of awareness. I mean, this is your work, Geraldine, too, about how to shift people's ways of looking at the world. So talk about that. Talk about how you do it and, and any communications you may have gotten from ETs. Well, you know, one of the things I want to add to the last comment that you made that we want to kind of look at is if we look historically at ancient civilizations that have come to a pinnacle, a certain point of knowledge, of wisdom, of technological advancement, every time they have reached that point, it's almost as if there is that contact, there is that awareness of our multidimensional uh, expression that we have in this universe. And every time that we've reset that clock, it's almost like we are now going through that process as a, as a whole uh, you know, globe, our whole earth, our whole universe is evolving and reaching a point in which technology has also allowed for this new understanding. And when technology is advancing in, in, you know, talking about technology and artificial intelligence, that artificial intelligence is mimicking this, this organism, which is also a technology. It's one of the most advanced technologies in this multiverse. But within that, we become aware of our multidimensional aspects that are available to us. One of the things that we have to understand is that even our system, our system here on Earth has created a lot of compartmentalized um, thinking about ourselves and our multidimensionality. There's a lot of agendas that have taken the extraterrestrial topic and made it a fringe topic in order for it to be taboo, to be shameful, mm -hmm. to be something that is not talked about and shamed. Um, and that, that's something that we want to break at this point also. 
as experiencers coming up to the plate and talking about these experiences openly so that we, we can are get breaking into, it. I think yeah, this, this, this yeah. Happened. exactly. It's happening already. And so the invitation is for all those that are new to the extraterrestrial topic to kind of come in and know that you know, we, we are the ones as experiencers, we are that disclosure, you know, we seem to get sometimes sidetracked into just looking at ufology, just the UFOs that are in the air, but we forget that there's a whole other aspect of it, which is the experiencer that has firsthand experience at this kind of interdimensional contact. And so when I work with my clients, you know, uh, through Hybrid Mother, um, I do support groups for people that are having experiences on the hybridization program. Program. And the, the purpose is that we're learning that within the body, within the DNA is encoded this knowledge, this awareness, it's already a part of us, that when we enter certain states of consciousness, we're activating DNA, which stores the information that allows access into these parts of us that are, you know, extraterrestrial, in fact, interdimensional fragments of our own self. So it's, it's an ability for us to access the information through what's here already. We don't even need to look outside of ourselves for healing, for information, for wisdom, for even the most advanced technology we can mirror um, and, you know, from the functions of the body. And when we look at these UFOs, we, we look at um, technology that our physics doesn't work with. So we're also expanding our mind in those directions of sciences, which are now going beyond, you know, what we've been taught in school. Mm -hmm. So it's breaking a lot of different barriers that we're here to hold space for, hopefully. Absolutely. I mean, I love what you said. I think contact disclosure is an inside job. It, it is. So... Um, let me just ask Barbara, because she has to leave soon, right? So what places of new awareness, when you work, you've worked with hundreds of people in your practice. So what revelations, how are they changed? How are they different and maybe I could say better people because they've integrated and accepted their contact experiences? Well, you, you mentioned a very good point about uh, they're having to find out about it in the first place mm -hmm. from the little hints and wonderings that they've had. And then um, integrating it does take some time. And the more that they look into the experiences mm -hmm. that they've had, the more that they realize that a lot of those experiences with the beings have been extremely favorable. And in many cases, out and out helpful even life-saving. So in other words, among all the experiences that, that people have, um, many of those experiences involve physical checkups and then healing done by the extraterrestrials. I've had so many clients, uh, well, I've had more than 2,030 people I've progressed to ET experiences, and many, many of them have been physically healed even from really serious things like life-threatening cancer or heart disease. And not only that, but sometimes on board the craft, uh, these people are taught to do healing, um, which they bring back here to earth and, and they become healers. Uh, some of them actually change their, their whole vocational jobs and uh, become healers full time. Uh, so anyway, of information given to many of these experiencers, and it expands the consciousness, it expands the whole realm of understanding of reality. I think that through these experiences, people have come to know about other dimensions of reality, because some of these beings seem to be in a 3D physical reality, but many of them are in other dimensions of reality. Yeah. So our consciousness, the more we know about this, it just keeps expanding and growing, increasing, deepening, widening. I think it is really wonderful for humanity uh, that so much opening up is happening. We wow. know, of course, that on the 3D level, 
here on earth. Oh my goodness. There's so much dysfunctional stuff going. And yet this other part of reality, I think really gives us hope. And especially the more that some of these really highly conscious benevolent beings give information to us through the encounter experiences and sometimes often through channeled information, uh, the more that that helps us as a world community uh, to really enlarge our point of view, enlarge our understanding, to get out of all the little nudgy goochie awful things going on that are brought to our attention over and over and over again with yeah. the public media and even our fiction. Uh, but anyway, there's so much more out there that is really high consciousness, high-minded, excellent. And unfortunately, more and more of that is coming through. Part of it, of course, through the extraterrestrial encounter. Part yeah. Of it. I think that's what's changing in this sort of uh, forum that we're doing here. And let's see where we're going. I think this is what Carolyn Corey's superhuman film is about, taking us, okay, we're multidimensional, yes. We have non-local awareness. But then what's coming, Carolyn? What, where is this all putting us as exo-beings and multidimensional consciousnesses? And what's the next step here? Yeah, exactly. It's it's about acknowledging that this is all real and now putting it to practice, you know. So that's the reason why the film is no longer talking about the theory that our consciousness is beyond our physical body, has all these abilities. Uh, it's more to demonstrate, you know, validate and do these, uh, you know, show scientifically how this is possible and to provide, um, you know, uh, show how many people around the world are using these abilities to expand their consciousness and, uh, and tap into the world's beyond. And so now it becomes not just integration, but practical application of all of these experiences and our innate um, abilities. So that's why I'm very hopeful for the film, for people to use it as a tool for themselves to, to kind of try to use these tools to, ex to stretch, to expand and extend uh, their awareness. And for example, for example, instead of knowing that, okay, I'm connected to my guidance system, to my spirit guides, I know I can communicate with an ET when I want, for example, but how did I do it? Can I consciously summon another entity? Uh, where is the entity? Is it in this? Is it in? Is, is it? Is it somewhere located within this time space? Is it beyond this time space? All of this specificity, you know, those details of the mechanics of how I'm doing it, adds to your innate powers because if I can do it. You know, by you know for speaking to a specific et then i can do it and i can apply it for something else and something else and something else which eventually enhances my ability to create my physical reality my earthly experience exactly so that's it why enriches, i'm just saying it enriches our lives as humans in a sense we yeah, yeah. and also you take charge you feel like you are in control the experience didn't just happen to you like this guy just showed up and downloaded this information in my brain. Okay, that's great. But wait, can I, can I, you know, be in charge of this experience, summon it exactly in this way, you know, summon it exactly in that way. And, and if it's something, you know, that is just happening to me, change it or stop it, or, you know, then you, you are, you are empowering yourself. You're taking charge of your human experience. And that's, I think, what this is about. We're supposed to come in in this human form, but apply our multidimensional consciousness capabilities within the human form. That's what's so, changing about our civilization. And, and the more we discuss these topics of exoconsciousness and our abilities, the more it empowers us. So Celestine, you've had those experiences of being showing up and 
communicating and you're calling them in on your sky watches. Talk about that a little bit because that's what Carolyn was alluding to, that kind of practice. So Yes, well, it took some time for me to uh, formulate and, and, and work up to having the immortals to appear. I call them the immortals. And when you have an immortal that appears to you, um, it's pretty special. So in the beginning of the sky watches, they would, uh, their ships would come by and I'm driving on the freeway or something and they would travel with me. And as they traveled with me, uh, they would telepathically talk to me about what they wanted to share. So it just was a natural unfoldment. We started when the oil spill happened in uh, Mexico, in the Gulf of Mexico. And, uh, you know, they said, as they came out in the Bay Area, and there was thousands of them, I thought to myself, oh my gosh, we're really in trouble because the fleet is in. And what's happening is they are here to have meetings about what's happening over in the Gulf. And sure enough, they said, we need to help you, but we have to have a human uh, permission. So that was the first time out. And so they spent about uh, 15, 20 days before we had the ceremony where everybody, 30 of us came and they did come out and we did give them permission. And the funny thing was two days later, this 22 ton apparatus came. And uh, I remember the news reports said, we don't know where this came from, but you know, and they stopped the leak. Now, things are still happening in the Gulf, but we said, oh, you know, maybe we were a part of that. So we decided to continue the, the Galactic Earth Council. So for me, they uh, gently come into my space. Uh, sometimes it is just something will come in front of me and it's my choice if I want to continue the communication. Like I just had a communication with Tanandor. He is the one I communicate with through the High Spiritual Council. And they'll give us a theme, uh, like they're saying 1111 is coming up, it's called the mirroring. And it's about seeing how the outer world is a mirror of the truth that is within the heart and then the core self, right? So um, the next Skywatch that we'll do is for advance. And so they'll be working with me and I started connecting them in with the moon cycle. Believe it or not, they're very sensitive to nature and to the forces. Um, I've had orbs in my yard and they, they come to communicate with me and I've recognized since I started doing these works uh, of taking people back to their galactic origin that they create a Merkaba and it's an organic orb around them that they travel through time and space. And so these little orbs that would show up, I'm going, okay, these are the people of the, they've created their little Merkaba and they're out and about and they're doing communications with people. And so, um, yeah, it's very natural. And if you, if you, as you tune in and as they become more familiar with you, you know, so I've had the one-on-one -on -one where they just morph right into the field. And I said, okay, this was the temples, the days of the temples when they would pray to, you know, they would do the prayer and the being would show up. I mean, it really happens, you know, or I could be in the council room and I could be taken, literally physically taken out of this dimension and brought into the council room, complete with the flame and the being standing there. And that's another interesting experience, right? Or I could be just walking in, in nature and I see a ship go by and I instantly talk to them. I could telepathically have a conversation because I'm not looking at the ship, I'm, I'm communicating with who's in the ship and they start communicating with light. They do this light synchronicity. So there's right. all kinds of forms and I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's a natural, and I encourage people, you know, keep your head to the sky. Right. Keep paying attention. Keep, keep opening paying your attention. Mind. It'll all come, you know, all the, all the dots will come together. And generally it's your lineage. I tell people, you know, who you're communicating is more than likely you created it. So whatever the incident happened so that you would wake up at the right time. Right. So you and accidentally, I'm sorry, that's why we're doing this. This is the time. And I also think the whole experience of contact is changing. Sherry, do you think, I mean, I, my feeling is that the abduction, whatever you want to call that, is not necessarily happening the same. Something shifting in our relationship to these beings. What do you get about that, Sherry? 
I totally agree with you. I don't think the abductions, I'm not sure that they're even happening anymore. The classic abduction case coming into your bedroom at night or taking you out of the car. I, I'm not aware of it. My mm -hmm. guys, uh, my interactions with them have, it's changed a lot. It's more mind to mind now. Um, it's, it went through different stages and I don't know if it's, if it's tied to the times we're in or if it was tied to my own evolving um, and my own acceptance of them. But it's more of a communication, a give and take communication that you have mind to mind. And my guys are more concerned right now with what's happening on the planet with the ascension. And it's what, what are they saying to you? Like what? What are they saying? Um, one of the things that they're saying is is love is the most important thing. It's the only thing that matters, and we have to, love is is everything, mm -hmm. and that we need to to always put that first and always be aware of our consciousness, our, of our frequency. Um, it's just, they're, they're spiritual, but they're also, there's also an aspect of them that's involved in the politics somewhat because that directly ties into how fast humanity is going to awaken and when we're going to gain our freedoms and all of that and move beyond the 3D paradigm. So they're, they're tied, they're tapped into that. I don't know if it's different levels, different groups of them. I mean, I deal with a lot of different races so there could be waves like i think a lot of us oh barbara yeah what do you think barbara i know yeah i have to leave in a couple of minutes but i'd like to uh, bring forth the idea of the reality actually that many of the extraterrestrial beings the different species are creating hybrids now i think most of us have heard of the hybrids who continue to live on the spaceships because they're not human enough to be here. But there's a whole other aspect of hybridization that has been going on for some decades now that we know of. And I know of probably 16 or so of these people, and there probably are more. Anyway, these hybrids were created by very benevolent extraterrestrial beings to be primarily human beings who are born here on Earth, and they are here for special uh, missions. Uh, the co-author and I, Miguel Mendonca and I wrote a book called Meet the Hybrids, and, and the subtitle of the book is The Lives and Missions of ET Ambassadors on Earth. So mm -hmm. these people, there are eight of them we um, interviewed extensively for this book. Uh, they are here, uh, born from human mothers, but having been hybridized before conception or during life in the mother's womb. So they're born here as a regular human child, but with oh, usually four or five different species of extraterrestrial genetics in them. Mm -hmm. And so they are here to do the work, the benevolent work, that these beings would like to be here and to carry out on Earth themselves. But mm -hmm. since they're too different than the rest of us human beings and would not be able to stand our viruses and bacteria and so forth, uh, they can't be here. So the next best thing they can do is to add their genetics to some human beings and then continue to visit these human beings throughout their lives and encourage them to carry out their mission. So wow. to put their mission in a thumbnail, it would be to help to evolve the consciousness of humanity and to help humanity to evolve in the ascension process. Right. So many of these <laughs> extraterrestrials who have created this type of hybrid, who live on Earth, um, they would like to see us evolve enough to be part of the great galactic federation that is there out in space. Mm -hmm. And to be part of the galactic federation, you have to be much, much more highly conscious and benevolent than we as a human species have been. We're trying. <laughs> And this is the emphasis of the whole conference. Um, hopefully, we are making some strides in changing the 
consciousness of humanity so that we really can evolve and ascend. Thank you, Barbara. That is a beautiful way of wrapping it up. I feel like that's somehow my genetics have been shifted and I feel like all of us here are on that mission. I mean, Geraldine Orozco works with hybrids um, in many ways to get them on track, to understand their reality and also get rid of any programming that may have interfered with their initial mission. So Geraldine, talk about that work that Barbara mentioned about the hybridization. Yeah, you know, and uh, Barbara's absolutely right. I mean, we can look at uh, the work of Barbara Lamb as well, who talks about how these hybrids, I mean, have come in incarnating in this in these timelines. And it's really just uh, magnificent to see these beings that are so highly evolved. They have an understanding of the physics and science that are, are surpassing, you know, college level understanding of, of the world that we live in. And so, but but the way that I uh, study these these and work with hybrids is unlocking really the hybrid aspect that is encoded within you. Um, I I believe our entire human race is actually a hybridized race that has kind of evolved from an origin point. And even though we are being inserted other hybrids that are a, a cocktail, a design cocktail of DNA, we are also holding that, that uh, cocktail of DNA within our body, that, which I think allows us to have the connections to these interdimensional aspects of ourselves. So the work that we want to do is to deprogram all of the false programs that we take on as children when we're born. Um, you know, we are, we are wide open, our energetic spaces are open, but it's through programs programming that begin to inhibit and break down and create a disconnect between that higher aspect of ourselves that is available to us. Um, and so we begin to deprogram that doing some meditation, doing inner work, during uh, a very deep inquiry to try to understand who we are. I think the divine blueprint of the body is actually one that is so interconnected with all things around us that this awareness of uh, hybridization and the connections of those things become aware, uh, like happened in my story where, you know, I was introduced to the hybrid children and that, um, you know, opened up psychic abilities for me. And then I was meeting... Um, uh, you know, other aspects of my uh, experiences, ET experiences, which allowed me to see that these hybrids, I had been working with them throughout my life. And hundreds of women that message me now talking about their hybridization program experiences, um, you know, having the children, working with them. And there's a whole, a whole um, process to how these things are carried out. Everything from the gestation process in the womb to the birth of them, either in this timeline or within these kinds of hybridization crafts, um, in which they are oftentimes distributed to other, you know, galaxies or other areas of our of our universe. There's many, many different agendas. I believe thousands of agendas of this kind of hybridization program. And uh, as you heard earlier in my presentation, discussing how um, our soul plays a huge role in the recording of those experiences. And it's through deprogramming that they begin to emerge. This information begins to emerge. So I think it's an amazing time to have these conversations. And I know that there's a lot of hybrids that innately uh, connect to this information. Some people have been fascinated with the ufology and, and uh, extraterrestrial since childbirth. Um, you know, and, and they, they are familiar with this topic. And I believe it's those people that have conscious experiences, these people that are connected to this information are here to bridge the gap between the interdimensional realm and our physical plane. They help bring light to that and we're bringing it, grounding it into the space in which it becomes something that we are learning to navigate, like C Caroline was talking about, you know, we're learning how to navigate our multidimensionality. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. No, thank you. That is great. Look, this is why I think Rebecca Hardcastle's um, work is pulling it together as, um, as an institute, as a foundation for people like all of us here to start to express and kind of um, create a central focus of what this next level of civilization is about. So Rebecca, can you tell us then what is the purpose of 
of your institute. What do you hope for as we kind of go to the next level? What's, what's your vision for all of us and the planet? Um, to go back to what um, Geraldine was saying, um, this idea of hybrids, or if you see yourself as a star being, however you see it, we as an institute began to see how important it was that we sustain and advance natural human consciousness. We began to see that um, technology and transhumanism was possibly going to interfere with our ability to uh, open our chakras, to open our meridians, to move out into this natural field of consciousness and do what we need to do um, due to maybe um, prohibitions of synthetic biology. And so we began to see ourselves, I know it's a funny, it's a funny word, but we began to see ourselves as remnants. But if you look back at at the history of ancient aliens or the history of ufology, where we look back in time, there's always been ET hybrid type beings on earth that come forward and sustain and, and grow a civilization. And sometimes that growth happened after maybe a flood or an asteroid or a destruction that humanity lost something and ET beings step in and say, we're here to help you build a new civilization. That's literally what we're doing with the Institute. We are saying that those of us who feel called, and I, I loved, um, Celestine, when you told that story about the Gulf and, 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 and the, uh, the oil leak in the Gulf, at that time, I was working with Dr. Edgar Mitchell in Washington, D.C., and he was so hurt by that oil leak in the Gulf. And we were at that time working with Zero Point Energy. And that's really what happened with the Institute was I began to see these um, amazing hybrid and extraterrestrially connected multidimensional consciousness people that were kind of living on the fringes of life. And, and they came to us and they said, this is my invention. And I mean, at first look at that invention, you would go, oh, yeah, right. This doesn't make any sense. The second look at it is that, well, you know, maybe this does make sense. And I just was really caught up in the need to say that it's hard to go and bring an invention into the world. It, it's just hard. I have so many colleagues and friends that have done it. I mean, it, it, it's very difficult. And, and we felt that if as an institute, we got behind these people and said, you know, what if we could have an incubator for you? What if we could have a training for you? What if we could introduce you to a network of people um, in, in the community of earth that would support you bringing this forward? And that's really, um, that's really what our mission is. And Every, every invention, every innovation, every, every new idea that someone wants to write a book on or make a presentation on, all of those are building blocks for an exoconscious civilization. It's not just one person in charge. It's, it's, it's really just a massive movement of people that have been allowed to say, I am multidimensional, I received information, and I want to bring something new into civilization, but I need help in doing it. Wow. We should form a think tank of everyone here and lots of people listening and just spend a couple of days kind of working it all out so we, there can be a, a platform for approaching the public with the multidimensional, um, not a possibility, but fact that we live in that kind of consciousness. So. It could be a part of education. It could be a part of just teaching mm -hmm. children, which is what Caroline's doing, mm -hmm. to realize who they really are. And this is really the change I think we want. So uh, Caroline, I want to talk to you because I think, I don't know if you've said you're a hybrid, but you seem to be very much in touch with those ET realities that are... Um, you know, immediately available to you. Do you want to talk about your process of waking up to that? Whoa. <laughs> I, I don't know if you're, I sure. didn't mean to throw that at you. I, I mean, you're. Yeah, no, but, uh, I'll share what I, 
what I yeah. can share. But yeah. uh, I pretty much came in knowing, um, you know, where I had come from and uh, my process and how I took on a human body. Um, so, right. yeah, so I kind of already was aware of, of all of that. And so, uh, but certain things kind of uh, kept kind of coming in, adding to the story, if you will. So I'm not a hybrid in this. Well, first of all, I think everybody is a hybrid on some level because you have the human um, body, so the human DNA, but you come from another system. Even if it's this planetary system, it's still a different configuration. So you are a human plus something, a different human configuration, a different material configuration, or a different planetary galactic or universal configuration. So that's one way of being a hybrid. Uh, however, yeah, I'm speaking and I think I'm not, people can't you're on. No, you're good. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, so that's that. But then there's a, a different way of also becoming a hybrid, you know, through the abduction and this whole thing, um, and the um, the genetic uh, engineering. That's a different type. So I'm certainly, I'm definitely not that. Um, I am aware of my other configuration and how I, I had to. Uh, like I said, apply it and bring it into this human body. And so I, uh, my consciousness is, um, it, it is not planetary, if you will. And because of that, whoops, uh, because of that, yeah, all of the, uh, all of the uh, information that came afterwards was more like a additional tools of, of how to, do this you know how to expand consciousness in the human body so to answer your question are you a hybrid uh you know i am but not in the way that i just described it's more of um, well my, you know. yeah no but my question really was okay now what that we admit we all acknowledge we are connected to the stars that's sort of a foundation for human beings and how does it look to openly interact with these beings? How does it look for a society? How do we find a smooth integration to those realities that we want to create here? Uh, I think the first step is for you to understand what is your configuration, who you really are, because that is the point of coming into the human form. So the more you understand uh, your true origin, your true essence, you know, the, the human DNA plus whatever that is, the more you integrate it. So now as a human and as I become aware of my original essence, Everything that I say, everything that I do, everything that I project is now charged with my human aspect plus my other, you know, aspect. And so now I'm contributing, I'm pouring that frequency, this new, never been done before, never put together in this way before into the collective consciousness. So if I do that and you do that and she does that and ever you, you're pouring your Pleiadian, she's pouring her Arcturian and she's pouring her, you know, so we're all now literally contributing to the evolution of the human species and the human DNA. And so the first step is to recognize and develop and integrate your original divine essence. I say divine because it's really is a divine essence and then put it all together and then consciously send it out, emit it through everything that you do. So, uh, you know, sometimes people get confused, like they think that, oh, in order to contribute to the human evolution, I have to write a book or be a healer or, you know, do like build greenhouses or something like that. This to me is like a day job. We're talking about, you know, we're talking about frequency and programming and we're talking about configuration of DNA uh, that gets integrated within the collective consciousness. So that's the real work that we're here to do. Does that make sense? Absolutely. That is so important. That is so 
that's why I was hoping for this panel uh, to start the integration of the reality that ETs are here, they're a part of the world, they're, they're integral to our future, and we need to wake up to what's really going on. We're doing a, a panel on disclosure tomorrow, but I think it really is here with the experiencers that we have to really ground the reality because it's, it's true for each one of you, these experiences. So Sherry, what does the future look like, do you think, once we integrate this on a big scale to the fact that, hey, you know, we're not alone? <laughs> Wait, can you unmute Sherry? Neil? Neil, are you listening? Neil, oh, there, I right, do one more time, Sherry. Yeah, okay, go. Somebody muted me. Um, well, the future looks great. It looks fantastic. It look, it's, it's amazing where we are as a species and where we're headed. You can see it's on the horizon and it's fantastic. I'm so excited about it because along with the, um, the contact with our star family, our cosmic family, comes all kinds of advancements. And the, 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 the program that's been running on this planet of keeping humanity enslaved and keeping them small and um, everything that's been done to the human species, it's heartbreaking. And that's all coming to an end. It's being broken right now. That's what we're watching in the news. Well, if you watch the news, but if, you, if, you're, if you're aware of what's going on out there, we're, you know, they're breaking the back of the, of the, of the controllers and they don't like it, but that's, that's what's happening. And so I think we have a fantastic future ahead of us just fantastic and it's the sky's the limit you know as far as what can happen um, yeah. humans are going to I don't think they can even comprehend how great it's going to be you go you fast forward three or four generations I think it's going to be just a whole different world not even close to what we're living in now I so agree that, no I'm excited too thank you that's that's yeah. beautiful what do you see Celestine for our future our unfolding our possibilities well, I love uh, what you said, Sherry, sky's the limit. And uh, I believe in humanity. Uh, I have just felt, I feel the world all the time. And I feel this awakening. On 4.4, we had 5 million meditators uh, just focusing in when the energies awaken. So um, I, I know, I understand that um, it's going to be, they're gently moving forward. We're seeing more uh, ships. They no longer have to cloak from what I understand, what I've been told. Uh, because our frequency, we are modulating the Schumann resonance is now up beyond 30, for, you know, it's up in 300s. And so we're interfacing with the frequency of our galactic cousins and relatives. We're actually at a place where the shift is, is happening in our brains and they work very, they're very patient, you know, the synapses, we need to have that synapses. So all those, this uh, understanding that we all are galactic beings as they see us in a human seed, you know, the signature form and they resonate that we are the tone of earth. They actually hear the tone. They've taught me to hear the tone of earth. We represent earth. We could be so proud of that because we are the children of the Milky Way, but earth has a signature tone. And so what they're trying to do is gently guide us to understand um, that we have something to contribute but we have to come out of the barbarism of trying to hold each other down. And they said, as long as one child doesn't eat, as long as one doesn't have a place to sleep, we're not seen as a intelligent species. So there's more work to be done. And so they're working now through the modulations of inner communication. And we love those that do meditation because in the silence of the meditation, the word can be spoken. And we look at all the singers and the performers, you know, like Prince, he was visited by Venusians. We have the Beatles, we have the Beach Boys, you know. There was a gentleman who did a talk one time, it was so fabulous, 
34 or 35 different, he just like listed them all and they'd had a visitation and that was way back in the 60s, you know? So it continues. This is not something that just started yesterday. This has been happening for some time now since we blew out the shield, uh, you know, the, this is my feeling, my experience. When we blew out the shield with the atomic bomb blast and I saw the sky torn in two and the Native Americans, we, you know, my parents took us there and we, we did, um, they, they brought out the ghost dance and they started dancing. This was a kind of a turning point for humanity. And they, so the working, the choice between taking power over love, you know? And so there was a group who did take the love, you know, and they carried it and we're still carrying it and we're here doing the work and I'm so hopeful for humanity. So hybrids, I've worked with them. I did many, you know, I do I have a clinical hypnotherapy. So I work with abductions and all of that as a, and so everybody has their place. Mm -hmm. And I love what Carolyn said about function. So they say, what is your function and your quality? And so they work with you starting from that, you know, like what were you birthed into the creation for? What is the radiant one birthed you as an expression of creation. Mm -hmm. And from there, understanding what your name, your vibration, what you're here for, then integrative processes can happen to guide you. So I've been guiding thousands and thousands of people. We've been working for, you know, this has been 40 years, you know, just standing before you today, many of you. And um, I, I love seeing people, beings who, who awaken, you know, they come in and they go through the polishing of the mirror, they awaken, they become fully integrated, and now they're in society being beneficial to everyone. So that's it. That's what we're doing. Us. We have offices everywhere, Alan. <laughs> you don't have to, there's no worry about that because there's so many of us now. We get to have our say. This is our time. And, uh, you know, as, as um, uh, Rebecca, you were saying, or I, I think it was um, uh, Ger Geraldine, where, you know, you try to get something happening and they would shut it down. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and so, but the, you know, the cat's out of the bag. And uh, I, I feel like what they've told me in the sky watches is when people come there, they say, who are you? What do you need? Right. So if you're a communicator, they can take you into the inner realm, into the cities of light. There's close enough modulation of the frequency that you can actually go there and breathe and, and be at one mint. You know, I've been into the archives and stuff. And they take you there. They, how could they show you? They want to give us the technologies like the tachyon energy. They told me to speak about tachyon to use for communications and computers instead of the microwave. So, so they're ready to give it to us. And, and so it just takes whoever it is. So even when I, when I bring you out to Skywatch, you have the opportunity to speak to our grouping and they will then help you and assist you to find the ones that can bring you in and give you the information. So, so it's put, wide open. Put your Skywatch information in the chat and then thank you, Celestine. Uh, Geraldine, I, I wanna know as you emerge and do your own work and process, how is the vibratory field of your own body shifting? Don't, I mean, I can just talk about me. It feels like it's humming or buzzing sometimes. And what's your experience of this integration and evolution? Yeah, I, I feel that the levels of the body being able to hold this unconditional love are growing and growing and expanding in the body. And I feel that we are evolving. It's, it's an evolution of this human organism in the physical form that as we spread all of these beautiful messages and talk about these tools that we can use to heal our own body, to become the sovereign beings of free will that have the ability to implement our own healing abilities and transformation through those um, you know, aspects as we explore this duality that we're here to experience on, in, in, this, uh, in this plane. It's, it's such a gift and every single person that is here, I mean thousands of people that have tuned in to listen to these panels to try to inform themselves and learn about it. You guys are so beautiful. My heart explodes when I see that because um, 
you are the ones that are asking those questions and bridging the gap and you have wisdom that comes through you that opens up space for us to be able to hold that what happens is this amazing coherence that is created this connection we're interconnected energetically and I feel more and more that my physical self my identity the self of myself becomes dissolved into this collective uh, whole that we would like to move forward to more and more when we wake up and we start leaving that identity of the self we become one and you feel it you feel it at the cellular level you feel it emotionally physically um, and energetically I feel that this interconnection is opening and activating tel telepathic communication uh, we're kind of all uh, moving through the celestial bodies of our universe and picking up like radio waves this information that helps us know how to move forward how to move next as a collective so for me it's a uh, it's it's a uh, constant moving in and out of dimensions and merging with um, this awareness that we are one and uh, that's the hope for this extraterrestrial topic is to once again it's just it is it is it's the alpha the omega we are all of it and at the same time we're nothing embodying that and seeing how we can co-create from that place I think beautiful thank you Geraldine thanks for being here Re Rebecca what does the future look like for exoconscious planet well, how does this world in 20, 30, 100 years, look as we embrace who we really are. Interesting. I've been looking at the chat every now and then. And oh. There's a big conversation about COVID, oh, which is I, interesting. Oh, yeah. And, someone wants me to ask, why doesn't the aliens help us? Right. With I think, you know, we created a mess. I think we have to get ourselves out of the mess. And we can't look <laughs> for people to save us because, you know, where we need to start to reconnect to the, our true essence. I mean, that's my answer, but so that's why I wanted to keep the conversation sort of at another level, like where we're going and we can, everyone knows where we are, but where are we going and how are we going to get there? So that's what I was. I think a big part of, of where we're going is that, um, you know, COVID may be a lower energy to talk about, but I think many and many of us are coming in right now and we have the inventions as healers mm -hmm. to address something like COVID, but uh, we haven't given ourselves permission to, to, to use it. And maybe we have the technology to address it. I, right. I kind of see, do, do, do you know what an, an, an antidote is? It's, it's like yeah. if, if you have a disease or whatever, there's or, or like a created disease, for example, there's always an antidote for it. And I, I kind of see extraterrestrial experiencers, exoconscious entrepreneurs as antidotes. So we are really here on planet Earth to say, we're here to work, we're here to bring in new inventions, we're here to address issues. Um, it may not happen overnight, it may not be an ET miracle, but it's going to be something that is co-created. So we see ourselves as exoconscious entrepreneurs as being um, and some of us have, have used these terms of as morally autonomous individuals. So we hold ourselves to a to kind of a higher level of morality and ethics as we bring this, this new exoconscious civilization forth. But it's also something that, um, as Caroline mentioned, you know, it's important to, to raise your frequency but energy is also about movement and movement is also about action. And this is a time that is going to demand of humans that our movement into this multi-dimension is going to bear fruit. It's absolutely going to bear fruit. I don't know what that fruit's gonna look like. I've got some ideas of it. And we at the Institute certainly feel that we wanna begin, and I know Alan, you love art. We wanna to begin to kind of paint that palette of art of what this is going to look like by actually bringing in creation. So we are, we use the word co-creators. So we are co-creating with extraterrestrials. And I think that this is probably done different times on earth. Um, this isn't a new thing. I think there's always been a cosmic consciousness component to humanity and that they've used it in different ways. But um, this is our time to do it. And many of us have come in from 
you know, past lives, maybe in Atlantis or Lemuria or Lyria. And we're bringing that knowledge in at this time and creating this together. Yeah, I think we're creating a superhuman race of possibilities. And of course, yes, there's viruses, there's problems, there's suffering. And I think we do have the technology to deal with it if we can all come together and be aligned in a, in a kind of multi-dimensional singular consciousness of a common humanity. I think that's what the ETs are waiting for. So Carolyn, you could wrap it all up for all of us and say, once we all become superhuman, what does the world look like? What's the re reality here? Yeah, I think this whole situation, the current situation, is a good stepping stone to increase the contrast. To, so it's in our face. This is what it looks like to be in separation and in fear. Make up your mind. This is your choice. This is the time to take charge of your own destiny and create your reality. So I still feel this whole madness that's happening right now is getting us to the ultimate destination, which is unification. So if we can keep that picture, that vision, that fast forward a little bit through this separation, this chaos, and uh, start working on yourself, start practicing right now, all of these abilities that you already have, strengthening, enhancing your consciousness, begin to create uh, what you want to create in your individual life, then visualize it for your family, visualize it for your community, and then visualize it for the whole world, but then let go because other people are gonna create whatever they're gonna create. If I were to look at it this way and I fast forward, I see an intelligent being, uh, the new human, uh, as, as very, very highly sensitive in the sense that even communication telepathically, we become second nature. It would be like a no big deal <laughs> to uh, retrieve information spontaneously from any point in the universe, bypassing all the institutions. And that's also part of the reason we're going through this is for the collapse of the current institutions that are no longer relevant. This is such old, old paradigm that needs to collapse and be done with, you know? And so, so then you fast forward and now you are in a place where you can create a coherent, intelligent species that creates institutions that are um, in resonance with its true nature, which is free, which is connected, which is aligned with the intelligence of the universe, with the source, directly with the source. No middlemen in right. a, on any level, in, in any societal whatever, through education, religion, finances, you know, no middlemen. You are directly connected to the universal source to manifest what you want. So your mm -hmm. physical body is healed spontaneously your uh your innate ability sensitivity to hear see sense telepathically communicate levitate teleport all of that becomes second nature mm -hmm. also to the point where your physiological structure changes you need less sleep because you are so energized from the actual free energy that's coming from the sun that's feeding your body that's feeding the planet itself and you can sustain your body in this way through uh, this natural source chi, if you will, coming through your body. So um, you need very little food, very little water, um, and uh, you are communicating at a whole different level, creating at a whole new level. That is the species that I envision on this planet. Beautiful. That is a great summation. That I feel just gets us to a level playing field where we, that's where we're supposed to start from. We've had to undo all this other stuff and build towards that, but that, that's the future I see as a just connected, supernatural, feeling, emotional, creative, 
in touch, intelligent beings. Thank, thank you all. Would you just go um, and kind of give your website, Carol and Corey, tell us Superhuman and what's your website? Yeah, for the consciousness work, it's carolinecorey.com. The, the movie is superhumanfilm.com. Great. Somebody said incredible panel. Excellent. Okay, great. Oh, uh, uh, Rebecca, people are asking about how to get in touch with your institute. Well, the institute's website is i-xoexo.com mm -hmm. and my website is exoconsciousness.com and that will also take you to the institute. Okay, and we're going to bring all these people together for a think tank of exo. I love that. Okay, Celestine, great to see you again and being part of this. What's your connection, uh, your website, how to take people out to Star Skywatch and all that? Um, GalacticEarthCouncil.com and we're doing Galactic Origins for those who really want to dive deep into who they are. Even if you think you know who you are, it's really kind of amazing. Yeah, so there we have celestial activations for those who want to, who, who are kind of awakened but need full, you know, a little bit more integration into society. And we're just happy to be here. Thank you, Alan. This has been amazing. I love everyone who's here. Thank you all. Everyone here represents the next level of consciousness. Um, um, Sh Sherry, do you want to talk about how to get in touch with you and your work and what's coming up for you? Thank you, Neil. Um, I can be reached at, um, my website is The Forgotten Promise. It's the name of my book, theforgottenpromise.net. You can reach me through that. As far as what's coming up, I'm working on getting my health restored. Um, I've had some health challenges, as uh, some people know. And um, there is a film in the works. The book was optioned and um, started working on a movie, which kind of morphed into a, now an eight-part mini-series. And that's being um, worked on. It's nearing completion now. So um, they will be looking for streamers for that. So hopefully that comes out. And that will help to awaken people, I think, in a big way, <laughs> in a very it, big way. Is it too much to ask what the Forgotten Promise was, or is that a whole? Um, the Forgotten Promise was, um, after I wrote my, the book, the book came through me. I, I didn't want to write the book, but the book came through me, and it showed up. And after I was done writing it, I decided not to have it, have it published. <clears throat> my my family, you know, I have no contact with any of my family. Um, my daughter threatened to disown me if, if uh, I published the book, had it published. So I said I wasn't going to publish it. I wasn't going to let it be come, come out. And um, my guys came to me that night and said, Sherry, I understand you're thinking about not letting the book go to press. And I said, yeah, I'm not doing it. You know, I, I, I can see what's going to happen if I do. My life's going to fall apart. I'm going to lose my family. And he said, you took a vow. Have you forgotten the promise you made? Uh, so there's the name. I changed my mind after that conversation and the book came out. I lost my family, mm -hmm. um, but the book came out and um, I fulfilled my mission. Wow. So, yeah. Thank you for doing yeah. that. Yep. Thank you for sharing it. And I think, you know, I think people won't have that same sort of problem in the future like this, like, because as we integrate more into the mainstream culture, it becomes more acceptable. So thanks for doing all that work, Sherry, and putting yourself out there, and, and we'll do more together. And Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Geraldine, um, how do people get in touch with you and what's coming up? And, and don't you think what happened to Sherry is less likely to happen now? I certainly hope so, Sherry. And I totally feel for what you went through. It took me years to feel comfortable to uh, speak out, you know, uh, in my journey as well. So I know, and, and there's hundreds of people that are experiencing that shame and that fear coming out. So for those of you that are here listening, please do connect with all of these amazing people on the panel that are open to holding space for, for, for this, you know, as we understand that we don't need to feel so uh, isolated you know from society we we are here to bring this into the norm into um this open communication 
Um, if you want to uh, need some help in the support group, please get in touch with me. I am a hypnotherapist, and I also uh, do a support group for those that are looking to understand and integrate those processes, uh, those experiences better. Um, so you can contact me at hybridmother.com. And if you wish to uh, continue this journey in the spiritual realm and get a deep programming with me, reprogramming into that new, more expansive self, please do check out GeraldineRosco.com. And I also have a YouTube channel, uh, which I have a lot of awesome free content that you guys can check out. And um, uh, let's hold space, everyone. Let's move out of that space of fear and judgment. And all of us play an important role in creating a safe space for each person. That's the law of free will. Opening space for each person to express themselves, even if it's something that we don't agree with. We have to be able to hold space with that by owning what belongs to us. And that's everything that's inside of this space right here. So um, thank you for this incredible panel and Alan for being such a great host. Thank you. Well, thanks for being here all day, Gerald, and let me kick this off in the morning with a great meditation. So we are becoming a new culture. We are becoming an exospecies. And thank you for sharing all this. This is a wrap up of day three for Portal to Ascension. Of course, we want to acknowledge the hard work Neil Gore's put in. Neil, do you want to come on a little bit and um, sum yeah, up yeah. today? I mean, yes. this it's this kind of conversation that maybe Facebook didn't want the, us to hear, didn't want the plant to hear, but we did it anyway. So, you know, let's just wrap up the day here. And what do you think the highlights were? Maybe? I, I think the whole day was incredible. And thank you all so much. Um, and I love just the way the energy is being, like the momentum that we create throughout the day. You know, we started out and then we just keep building on top of it and on top of it. And the whole intention for this really is just a nonstop stream of awareness, you know, and whoever picks it up at whatever time they need to pick it up is exactly what's going to happen. Uh, we're just going to keep getting this content out there. But the, the amount of people that have collaborated on this experience, look at this panel. Well, this is a pretty big panel for online, right? Just the amount of people that have collaborated on this experience just shows all of our intentions, really. And I love it. And there's been 200 people consistently in the Zoom room from 1030 in the morning to what is it now six after six so yeah. we're reaching people and you know just what was said here on this panel has already shifted me it's also given me more hope i had i've had hope that the transformation is happening but each of these women have integrated this experience in a way that is part of the new humanity and so Thank you all for being models. So coming up tomorrow, Neil, do you want to just do a quick um, highlight? Yeah, yeah. Let me just say thank you to all the panelists. I uh, appreciate you all so much. Um, every single one of you have, con like, the reason why you're here is because of a connection and a spark and the fact that, like, I resonate with all of your information, you know. So I just appreciate everything that you're doing. Keep doing it. And, you know, you have our support and you have the world support. I love you all. We're Thanks, Neil. Keep... Thank you so much, Neil. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil. This is ongoing, though, so stay in touch, and we're going to keep doing this. Yeah, we're going to keep this going. I think we should do more online panels. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so to, to wrap it up, what we have going on for tomorrow is um, we're going to start. So we're basically two-fifths of the way now in the event. You know, just a few hours ago, we were at halfway point. So we're nowhere near complete yet. We have a lot of more information coming out. Uh, tomorrow morning, we're going to start open the room around 10 o'clock. And um, I think we'll start early again, Alan, and maybe have a little chat before we go in. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yes. And then we're going to move into Adrian Valera from Disclosure Fest, the founder of Disclosure Fest. Uh, Michelle Anderson and myself are going to uh, talk to him, interview him, talk about the initiatives, the practical steps that his foundation are doing to really combat some of the sicknesses and the um, and the ailments of the world, you know, from the fact that we have homelessness and people starving. So we're going to talk about that. He's going to go into the mass meditation at 11, 11 a.m. Pacific. And then we have Grant Cameron and Alan, you're going to be interviewing Grant, right? Right. He's a brilliant, brilliant mind. I mean, he's a really at the forefront of the contact experience. He's the one who said to me, let's forget about government. It's the experiencers that have the answers to the whole situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, and he was actually on today. So he watched a lot of today. I think he was on for a good few hours. 
So the cool thing is a lot of these speakers that are actually on here are actually coming in throughout the five days to attend to learn as well. Right. You know, that's incredible. So and then, after, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. So after Grant, we have Co um, Costa, and I forget how to say his last name. I think it's Macreas, right? Macreas. Huh? So we have Costa. He's going to, he's also ET experiencer going into full Gruber with Alan. And I don't know if you want to say maybe a 30 second thing about Alan. I mean, about oh. Phil. Phil's a very funny guy. He has an interesting way of looking at, um, at the ET situation in terms of pop culture. He has a whole theory about the Wizard of Oz, and I'm not sure what he's going to talk about today, but he also has a lot of esoteric knowledge. So he mixes deep metaphysics, almost occult, with spirituality and ET consciousness. So it should be interesting. And then after that, we have Brooke Grove. And Brooke, I just stumbled across her... Uh, in August because I was running the International Near-Death Experiencer online conference and she was one of the speakers that had a near-death experience and through her NDE she tapped into all this awareness and these like energy healing powers basically and uh, awareness of past life so she's going to be here Sharia Dharma is going to be interviewing her and that's followed by Misha Johnston are you familiar with Misha at all Ellen? Uh, I know she, I think she worked with Geraldine. They run experiences groups and they really welcome anyone into their group to share whatever level of experience. And that's so important for people to acknowledge their experience as reality and to have people listen. So yeah, I like Misha. Yeah, and we're, we're actually going, um, just looking at this now, you know, I just picked people I resonated with, but now I'm actually taking a step to look and read every single name. And there's a lot of experiencers, you know, and it's really because we've come to the time where we've talked about the information and the fact that this is real, the government's released it, the uh, different, um, you know, Department of Defense organizations have basically said that this is a reality. We don't need to really know that right now in this community. We want to now explore what is happening with the experiencer. You know, what, like, right. what is actually occurring from uh, all these different people? Because they are the, um, the experiences like us and everyone who is just here are the interface between the extraterrestrial and the human. Mm -hmm. And it's experiences that are going to bring this into a mainstream reality. Exactly. Yep. And then we have Rebecca Hardcastle. It's going to be on uh, at 2.30 tomorrow. Shariah is going to be interviewing her as well. Then we have Kathleen Martin. And Alan, who's Kathleen? Oh, Kathleen holds a major position within the UFO world, in the world of ufology. She is the niece of Betty Hill, who was, Betty and Barney Hill were one of the early abduction people. They were abducted in 1961, and they really set the framework for what an abduction was about. And Kathleen was young at that time, but she was in on the conversation between Betty Hill and her mother. So she's at the forefront, Kathleen. She has the history of the abduction scenarios. She's very important in this field. Yeah, and you, I just got introduced to her. What We did a, an event with Ray Hernandez, great, Gwen Cameron, Kathleen, right. and yourself that's on both of our YouTube channels. That was like a two-hour experiencer panel, basically. That was pretty cool. So yeah. I, I really love her. And then we have Dr. Lynn Katai, who is the Phoenix Lights lady. She um, talks about the uh, what happened at the Phoenix Lights. And uh, she'll be on at four o'clock. And Alan, you'll also be interviewing her. Right. And then yeah. that's fo following Sherry Wilde is going to be next. So Sherry, you're going to be on again at 440 Pacific tomorrow. And who's interviewing Sherry? Sharia is interviewing Sherry. Okay. And then to top it off, at the end of the day, we have the disclosure panel. Yeah. And this is going to be really cool because we have Kathy Martin is going to be on there. Grant Cameron, Adam Apollo, and JJ and Desiree Hertak. Right. So and they are all experts. So they're going to take the whole idea of government cover up to a new level and talk about how it's really an evolution of consciousness that yeah. the government finally coming out about this. Right. That's how I. Yeah, these these actually people on this panel is really awesome because they have their feet in both worlds. You know, mm -hmm. when it comes to the consciousness mm -hmm. element, but then also the nuts and bolts. Even Adam Apollo talking about galactic technology, you know, and the Hertex as well. So that's going to be great, and that's at five twenty Pacific tomorrow night. Right, Neil, great job. Thank you for, you know, putting up so much hard work, putting it in to make, to reach thousands of people and make this a success and awareness and education. So thank you, brother. Yeah, we're just going to keep moving forward. You know, like the unity is the intention right here. All the conversations are beautiful. We're really creating this great energy and we're just creating ripples 
in the universe and the cosmos, just getting it out there. Right. So we'll see you tomorrow at 1030. Yeah, see you tomorrow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end off uh, with another poem, because why not? Oh, yeah, sure. Yes. All right. So I'm going to do a couple of poems, and we'll do what we did yesterday. We're going to phase out with a video at the end. So thank you all so much. Love you very much. Um, truly honored to be walking this path with all of you. So this one's called, All I Want to Do is Be. I have the world at my fingertips, but I don't grasp. Infinite possibilities asking the universe, what is the next task? All I want to do is be. All I want to do is breathe. Conceptual knowledge made manifest. Take action to myself. I confess I am all that is. I have moments of ecstatic bliss and I thank the universe for this. With utmost gratitude, elude the confines of cerebral masculine energy that defines this path that we're on. Moving into the feminine, the earth, moon shone down upon, cast eclipse over the sun, a pathway to union where we all finally feel one. You see, I have the world at my fingertips, but I don't grasp. Infinite possibilities, accelerated time is moving fast. All I want to do is be. All I want to do is be free from self-expectations, projections of false promises, achieving through external operation. Hope is misplaced in changing the earth without doing the inner work. You see, my soul, it will be gone soon, heading back to Saturn's moon, contractually living a lie, created a fragmented reality based on who, what, where, and why. So I fried my mind, numb out the fake, but it's all a game. And we're all playing a role in every moment. I know I'm an old soul, but it's not just about what I know. Orion, war, karmic balancing on planet Earth, forgetting our simultaneous lives, universal worth. History repeats like when in Rome, all I wanted to do was go home to Arcturus. Density got me on my knees, was so furious, questioning my own creation. Who is this and who am I? An internal fight at the end of the Earth tunnel. There is something that shines bright. Embody the darkness, full spectrum being, so I can transcend and I can live in the light. Thank you.